2B2T, now nicknamed the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, is renowned for its rich history and community. Over the past few years, millions of people have heard about the server, and it seems like every YouTuber and their cat have explored it. With such a large landscape filled with unseen treasure and history, whose interest wouldn't it peak? Well, back in 2018, it sure peaked mine. With a little bit of basic knowledge and a $20 purchase of future client, younger me was off to the races. Ever since then, I've since stopped playing on the server, but I've still paid attention to it. But as time goes by, I've started to realize something. 2B2T sucks. With it being plagued with a combination of cringy kids, slow performance, an infuriating queue, and boring monotonous gameplay, I couldn't even begin to imagine being one of these fat neats that spends their entire day sitting on Discord talking about the server. Well, yes, its new nickname, the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, is accurate. Its old nickname fits far better. The world's worst server. Yes, I know that this is one of the lowest hanging fruits to grasp at, but it's so true. 2B2T is incredibly slow, in more ways than one. First, you have the queue. <coughs> now the queue was added back in 2016 in order to keep the server from crashing because all of Russia's fans invading the server, and it serves a similar purpose to this day. If everyone could join 2B2T automatically, I think Housemaster's computer would explode and light his crack den on fire. The queue is a necessary evil for a server like 2B2T, but does that make it any more bearable? No! It still sucks just as much. Being forced to wait upwards of 5 hours on a shitty loading screen is absolute AIDS, and I have no idea how anyone does it. Like, imagine if the loading screen for any other game took hours to finish. That game would be super unpopular, right? It seems like every day, hundreds of people subject themselves to it. Think of the thousands of collective hours absolutely wasted every week to pretty much a glorified loading screen. You might be thinking, well why don't you just buy Priority Queue? Well if you do that, you still have to wait like two hours to get in the server, plus you have to pay $20 a month. At that point, you should just consider professionally drinking. And even with all this, sometimes the queue just stops working out of the blue, forcing you to wait another five hours. Just wonderful. Now even with the queue being absolutely unbearable, it is absolutely necessary for the server not to devolve into an absolutely unplayable laggy mess. Oh wait, it already is one. Logging onto the server is an absolute crapshoot because you have to gamble hours out of your day on whether the server is currently shitting itself or not. The lag on the server can get so bad at times that it takes minutes just to eat a piece of food. Sometimes the server will get so laggy that when you generate new land, the land generates, but you have to wait a little bit for the trees. There are so many little problems that this lag causes on the server. Not being able to hit enemies, not being able to shoot a bow, not being able to break blocks, not being able to move, not being able to open chests, random disconnects, I think you get the point. However, that's not the only thing about 2B2T that's a little bit slow. Let's take a look at its community. You've been a bitch since I first saw your fucking bitch ass face. I know exactly who you are, so I don't want to mix any words. You ever seen this motherfucker? Fuck! Bitch ass motherfucker! Just 
like that. The god becomes the violent one. 500 pounds, 5 foot 1. Nigga, your ass is gonna be the Bible, son. When the god becomes the violent one, all these bitches like Riley run. So watch out, cause you might be one second away from being finally done. In all of my time on the internet, I've never seen a community nearly as awful as 2B2T. It's like the only two types of people who play on the server are fat, neckbeard reddit incels who spend their whole day begging their mom to buy them priority Q, and 12 year olds who also spend their whole day begging their mom to buy them priority Q. A perfect showcase of this is the 2B2T subreddit in which you have to have at most a single digit IQ to post on. Either it's some hyper-autistically niche server drama, or it's some kid LARPing as Christopher Columbus discovering the new world. Speaking of LARPing, 2B2T LARPers are an extremely annoying part of the server's community. A LARPer can be any age, typically 12 to 17 years old, have little social life outside of Reddit and Discord, and will only aspire to be well known on a shitty Minecraft server. A member of this group will likely consider himself a 2B2T historian, most likely by watching one or two FitMC videos. They will also likely have a YouTube channel and will promote it non-stop due to their immense hunger for clout. Let's take a look at someone who may very well fit into this category. The Horizon is a YouTuber with nearly 500,000 subscribers and a total pussy who whines about getting banned from YouTubers' comment sections. Let's take a look at his About section. Question. Shout out? No! Sorry! Shoutouts only bring low engagement subscribers, and actually hurt more than they help. Jesus Christ, man. Talk about concern trolling. Keep in mind that this is the same dude who tries to kiss up to big YouTubers to get them to play on his shitty SMP. Cringe is an understatement when talking about this guy. Just look at some of these tweets. My goal is to make YouTube videos as high quality as possible, and more like movies than videos in the future. Making epicer videos makes me happy. LOL! Here we can see that without a doubt, the LARP runs strong in this one, especially coming from a guy who isn't even a text-to-speech YouTuber, but only text. And when he does make a video with his voice, the audio quality sounds like he recorded it over a phone call. Housemaster has also been staying very out of touch with the 2B2T player base, only contacting the community just three times in 2018, with no signs of improvement in 2019, and so far in 2020. I love opening up Reddit and seeing a billion posts about the Ukraine-Russia war out of nowhere. Now disregarding the Ukraine stuff, this just proves that he's a Redditor, which further solidifies him into the LARPer category. I remember in the third grade, <laughs> the teacher made an assignment asking me what I wanted to be when I grow up. <laughs> oh, I said YouTuber. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I feel like this one's pretty self-explanatory. However, the LARPers aren't even the most annoying group on the server. No, even more annoying than the LARPers is what I call the Copers. These would be the people who make fun of the LARPers for being losers while sitting in a Discord call, wasting away at their desk, not having showered in weeks. So we got a nice glaze of grease running along the lines here and here. Very cute double trin, unwashed shirt, and seriously cool monster energy drink sticker in the background. 
And while they claim to be self-aware, they're actually just as unself-aware as the LARPers. This group can be found all over 2B2T group Discord servers and are frequently found in 2B2T Discord calls complaining about the state of the server, yet continuing to play on it and give Housemaster money anyway. Now if you're looking for a good example of a coper, look for literally anyone in the Infinity Incursion or BSB. Someone who has autism, is always online, and has nothing better to do. Another annoying facet of 2B2T's community is 2B2T's huge child fanbase whose idea of humor is filling the chat with the n-word every two seconds. For such an adult server as 2B2T, it is alarming how many 12 year olds log in and clog the queue even more. The server is absolutely filled with children, just the same as Mindplex or Hypixel. Truly says a lot about our society. These are the kids that will idolize and iconicize random players on 2B2T, like the morbidly obese Pop Bob and other players who haven't seen a ray of sunlight in years. Yes, 2B2T has one of the most cancerous fan bases out of any Minecraft community, not even mentioning the numerous cases of doxing, malware distribution, and even a man being swatted for saying that he would kill Obama. However, there's something even worse about the server than its cancerous fan base. The server is really fucking boring. Now it's fairly common knowledge that 2B2T is not actually an anarchy server. People are frequently stripped of priority queue for their actions. This goes all the way back to 2016 with a 2B2T YouTuber named Taragadude, who got his priority queue status removed due to being involved with a group that had hacked one of Russia's friend's Skype accounts. So I will say right now, I'm sorry, he's obviously, he's, he's on the queue again. I'm sorry. I'm seriously, seriously sorry for what I did for taking him off the queue. It was because I thought he was involved with the hacking or he supported the hacking and I wanted to make him and the hack- I mostly wanted to make the hacker feel some- I mean, it wasn't really the hacker. I wanted to just do something about it. The reason I am sorry, because 2B2T, the reason it's so good is because of the idea of anarchy, right? Anything is allowed. Even hacking YouTubers is allowed. I understand that. So I messed up. And I vow from here on out, and Curtis is in here with me, Curtis, you and I will never, ever remove someone from the veteran queue ever again. Players today are now banned from buying priority queue due to them building lag machines which disrupt the server's performance. This video is not about that. However, 2B2T does allow hacked clients on the server, and while they are severely limited due to the server's plugins, there's no rule against them. But throughout the server's history, trouble caused by hack clients has caused the server's owner, Housemaster, to make some pretty invasive changes to the server. These changes came in the form of removing several vanilla features from the server. Three of these features that he has removed over the years are accessing the nether roof, shulker item lists, and elytras. The first feature, accessing the nether roof, is a glitch that can be performed by using boats or minecarts to move through the bedrock ceiling of the nether. While obviously not intended by the developers, it is still a feature of the vanilla game which hasn't been removed from the game ever since the nether was added 12 years ago in 2010. Housemaster disabled this feature due to traveling on the nether roof, making it very easy to load new chunks fast. His patch for this was to kill you if you ever ended up on the roof. The second feature, Shulker Item Lists, was a small list of items inside of a shulker box that could be viewed in your inventory without opening the box up. This feature was removed due to people being able to exploit these lists to get people banned by filling them with large books created by hack clients in order to book ban someone from the server, which pretty much meant that you couldn't join the server until you emailed House to reset your inventory data. Normally this wouldn't be a super huge deal, however, this also disabled the dot peak function of hacked clients, which allowed the user to see the entirety of the inside of a shulker box without placing it. The final and largest feature to be removed from the server are elytra. These are the wings that can be found in airships in the outer end that allow you to glide throughout the world or fly if you use rockets to propel yourself. This fast and convenient method of travel was removed for being, well, too fast. 
When flying at incredibly fast speeds with the use of hack clients, chunks would generate extremely fast which would cripple the server's performance. Elytras were disabled on 2B2T in September of 2019, re-enabled in August of 2019, disabled again in September of 2020, and finally re-enabled again in January of 2021, although they are still less reliable and more glitchy than in vanilla. However, keeping these disabled features in mind, the things that have been taken away from the server have had much less of an impact than the things that haven't been added to it. Hello all members of 2B2T. One of my disciples, the Unseen, has brought it to my attention that 2B2T is in desperate need of an update. I'm sending my grace to Housemaster and the server. Amen. Let's talk about Minecraft version 1.12.2. This is a version of Minecraft that was released on September 18th, 2017, more than four and a half years ago. This is the version of the game that 2B2T is still on. Think of all the things that 2B2T is missing out on right now. 1.13 added a whole new revamped ocean. 1.14 completely reworked villages. 1.15 added, a uh, fucking bees or something. 1.16 added new nether biomes, 1.17 completely redid caves and world generation, and 2B2T has none of that. 2B2T is permanently stuck on the World of Color update, seeing none of the game's new features. One of the reasons that Minecraft doesn't become super stale over time, mostly, is that every once in a while, new features are added which enhance the game, or at least prolong your enjoyment of it for a little bit. 2B2T does not have that. 2B2T's owner, Housemaster, has been teasing updating the server for years, but to this day, it still has never happened. Now I understand why 2B2T can't update. Minecraft's code severely limits how much the game can fully take advantage of a CPU on a computer, and this applies not only to normal Minecraft users, but also to Minecraft servers. Pretty much, 2B2T is running on the absolute best hardware possible, but Minecraft can only utilize a small fraction of the hardware's real power. This means that all of the new features and slowdown introduced in the newer versions of the game would make 2B2T an unplayable mess. As each version of the game passes by, I feel less and less confident that 2B2T will ever actually update. I would like to be wrong on this one, but I have a feeling that 2B2T will never update. Now you might be asking yourself, why would anyone in their right mind want to play on the server? And my answer to that question, hell if I know. In 2017, there was some drama on 2B2T caused by a player named Griff losing his veteran Q status due to building lag machines. Around the time, FitMC uploaded a really based video on the subject. Just take a look at what he says here and extrapolate it onto all of 2B2T. If you play stupid games, you're gonna win stupid prizes. If you spend all day just trying to lag out a Minecraft server, honestly, having your veteran Q status taken away is probably a good thing because you might choose to do better things with your life. You know, and I always have told people this, 2B2T is called the worst server in the world for a reason. It's anarchy, but it is a wretched hive of scum and villainy, and I've told this to many players. I play 2B2T because, yes, I enjoy it, but I also get something out of it. I'm able to do 2B2T YouTube, I'm able to provide you content, I'm able to make my time on the server worth it, I'm able to turn nothing into something. But there are players that will play on 2B2T every single day, wasting their lives. And to me, I feel that, you know, is unhealthy, it's a problem, and if him having his veteran Q status taken away, if this causes him to get out there and actually enjoy life, then I'm all for it. If you play stupid games, you'll win stupid prizes. Only in this case, stupid games are 2B2T, and stupid prizes are, well, 
No bitches. Hey guys, I have sh some shocking information. This is actually really serious. It's spy information for the Russia camp. Or all the fellow rushers. Okay, here it is. You have to get an ender chest. Because because in an because when you have the ender chest, you are decked out with not chapel, shields, everything. <laughs> the stupid veterans have left it all in an ender chest. So if they have one, it's all connected. That's why they always carry one around with them. So all you need to do is get an ender chest and you're decked out. This is for Usher. If he sees this, please, please put down your ender chest and steal all their stuff. Then, uh, then, then the veterans will be left defenseless without their notch apples, their shields, all the good stuff they have gotten and collected. And if I, and if I gather more information, I'll put it in videos. Thank you. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's go rushers!